My project site is located on the south side of the River Liffey in central Dublin, at Grand Canal Dock. Commonly known as Silicon Dock, Candless Technology and financial corporations have chosen this site for their European headquarters. However, it was once an industrial port, thronged with ocean-going ships and teeming with dock workers. Following containerization of Dublin port in the 1970s, the city's docklands fell into decline, with the area suffering widespread dereliction and deprivation. In 2018, Waterways Ireland considered building a floating pavilion to accommodate its regular quayside food market. This proposal did have some limitations. Firstly, market halls have a long history of failure. Secondly, a one-off building cannot easily facilitate a market trader growing her business. Nor could such a building easily adapt to a changing economy. There was no integration of horticulture into the proposal. And, finally, the feasibility study had nothing to say about the fact that the water in the dock is polluted. The area surrounding Grand Canal Dock has a diverse population of residents, workers and visitors all of whom would have some stake in the proposed market. The disparity in income groups is of particular concern. Areas inhabited by more deprived groups, highlighted here in orange, sit right next to wealthy districts, shown in blue. Incoming tech workers rub shoulders with the families of former dock workers but effectively inhabit separate worlds. The French philosopher, Michel de Certu, distinguished between urban strategies and urban tactics. He highlighted how people living on the margins deploy tactics to resist dominant urban culture in an effort to evade the strategies of the powerful in everyday life. Swimming is not allowed in Grand Canal Dock. Yet, swimming continues to be a much celebrated summer pastime for working class kids, as it has been for many generations. Sometimes tactics can become strategy, as when the powerful are forced to accept formerly marginal activities, like street trading, and incorporate them into their existing city plans. Grand Canal Dock is being transformed into a place for a people David Goodhart refers to as anywheres, a generic, neoliberal urban environment for an internationally mobile, cosmopolitan, socially liberal, and educated class. Arguably, this has been to the detriment of the cities, somewheres, the working class communities rooted in Dublin's Docklands. In the layout of the Victorian Market Hall, there is an effort, usually unsuccessful, to impose a predetermined order. In the North African Bazaar, order emerges from seeming chaos over time through clustered, incremental growth. In my design, I used modular technology to facilitate the incremental development of market buildings. This was to allow the participation of market traders who might only be able to afford the daily rate to hire a market stall, as well as those with capital to invest in buildings. The idea was that different building uses, shops, restaurants, bars and greenhouses, would emerge over time, growing in clusters around the pedestrian and cycle infrastructure. The sheer scale of the scheme mitigated against a detailed focus on its proposed incremental development. More thought needs to be given to what kinds of building uses might cluster together and in what circumstances. To how individual units might develop and change over time. To how the expansion of units can be facilitated along a given infrastructure. As well as to different options for layering materials in the same building envelope. My previous submission was largely focused on the water next to Google's Boland Key development. I have now shifted my attention to Grand Canal Square, a site less dominated by office space with a better mix of uses and people. I envisage a series of units, mixing market stalls, restaurants, greenhouses, roof and water gardens. These would develop parallel to the quayside and perpendicular to the infrastructure. The units would work to provide access to the water on the south face while creating an avenue of horticulture and food on the opposite face to the street, much as restaurants and shops develop over time in waterfront resorts. The market space could also function as a general event space, a site for hosting concerts or for film screenings. The incremental approach to urban development I have outlined here 
aims to accommodate tactics, creating urban environments Zoo's architecture describes as places of permanent temporality. The following are some examples of schemes adopting a similar approach. Each yard was created when a group of festival food traders came together to establish a longer-term home on land belonging to the George Bernard Shaw pub in Dublin city centre. Delivered by Carl Turner Architects in collaboration with a management group of social entrepreneurs, Pop Brixton turned an empty council-owned car park in the heart of Brixton into a new destination, housing around 50 small businesses working in street food, retail, and the creative industries. It started with a vacant office block, followed by the construction of a crowd-funded, pedestrian bridge. This Zoo's architecture initiative has spawned numerous spin-off projects, including a beer garden, a restaurant, a nightclub, and a rooftop vegetable plot. This city district is a work in constant progress, where urban experiments are trialed at full scale and in real time.